Ruiz Adama Barrow long before he became president elect? Adama Barrow is a native of URR. Consequency, Jimara consequence, village Mankamankunda. Born year 1965, 15th February 1965. Attend Kobakunda Primary School. Later Crab Island. Later Muslim High School. Work with Musanya and Sons. Travel to UK 2002. Come back to the Gambia 2006 and set up an estate company called Majum Estate. Interesting. We are both February borns, although I was born a good three years before you were born. Um, I understand you're an Arsenal supporter. We'll come to that if time allows us. <laughs> but um, who are some of the contemporaries that you can remember? People you went to primary school with, people you went to um, high school with, people you started work with? I can remember primary school. I have a friend called Ibrahim Abba. I will always remember him. Why do you always remember him? We are classmates, we share the same table, the same decks. He was the best student in English okay. during our time, and I was the best mathematics student. Oh. But when it is time for exams, he will always want me to help him with mathematics. And when it is English, he will not. Help. Oh. Then he will come first. I might come second or third. Maybe he didn't help because you did not ask. <laughs> I do ask, but he always refused deliberately. Okay. He always want to come first. I always, I always remember him. Mm -hmm. We were very close. Uh, at that youth level, we have a football team. He was our football captain, and I was our football. Uh, I was the goalkeeper. Okay. Yes, I always remember him. Okay. And I have a teacher who taught me in school, who was very close to me, called Musa K. Jalo. He was very, very close to me. We end up being close, 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 close friends. Uh, I always remember that man, but uh, he passed away. Mm -hmm. That's May he so rest in peace. What kind of a child would you say you were? Did you fight a lot when you went to primary school? I was the cool type. I was... Uh, I was a very, very cool child during my youth level. And uh, teachers liked me a lot when I was going to school. Because I can remember even uh, when I was going to Kobakunda Primary School, uh, Musa Jallo and one of our Arabic teachers, I used to go and collect their food every day on a daily basis. Collect their lunch, collect their dinner for them on a daily basis every day. Teachers liked me a lot. How did your love for football begin? I was a footballer myself. Mm -hmm. I was playing, uh, I was a goalkeeper. So from that time, I liked the game. Uh, and I follow football even in Banjun. I was a strong supporter of Walidan. Oh. During the time of Walidan, uh, I can give you the setup okay. before the match starts. I can tell you these are the players who are going to play. Okay. Yeah. Well, we are always on opposite sides. You support Walidan. <laughs> I've always supported Real de Banjo. <laughs> you support Arsenal. I support Liverpool. Okay. How did you come in love with Arsenal? It's not the best team in the world. Uh, it's not the best team, but it's among the best teams mm. in the world. Okay. Uh, I love Arsenal because uh, I think it's the one of the best teams that play very, very, very good football in this world. You can say anything about Arsenal, but we play good football. Okay. And I like the coach, Asen Wenger. He is very, very consistent and he is very, very steady. So I like him for that. Who is your greatest Arsenal player of all time? Which, which, who is this one Arsenal player you, you know, will always remember as being, um, you know, somebody who played extremely well for the team? I have three players that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Ian Wright is among them. And Cherry Henry. At the heart of our defence. Saul Campbell was very strong in our defense. Was, I can remember a football match that Saul Campbell was injured and he came back. He scored two goals. The journalist who interviewed him called him, he said, Saul Campbell, what a comeback for a central defender. Mm -hmm. 
two goals. That was great. I loved that moment. The Gambia that you were born in, that you grew up in, is it the same Gambia that you recognize even in 2016? The Gambia I grew in during uh, independence, I think the time of uh, the First Republic was a very nice Gambia. But things changed since 2000 and, uh, 1994. Initially, I supported the change because we wanted democracy. Because the way I was seeing it was incumbency is an advantage. That's why PP government keep on winning. We wanted change. We thought that they will bring in a very good system so that we have independent people to contest election and our democracy continue. But I was disappointed when the military decided to contest election as civilians. That was the turning point. I said no, that was not what we wanted. Well, they could have turned civilian and done the right thing. What was the cause of your disappointment? What was the reason for your disappointment? Well, as we always see in other countries in Africa, I think if the military turned to civilian, it's always difficult for them to 100% uh, accept democratic principles. So I was very, very skeptical. And because uh, they have given their words, that they are military with difference. Mm -hmm. We thought that that difference will continue. So this way I was disappointed. Ghana could say Jerry John Rawlings was a different, uh, was, a, was, was, was a case of where a soldier turned civilian did well. Uh, you're saying that did not happen in the case of the Gambia. Uh, it didn't happen in the case of the Gambia. But Ghana also, uh, I think he did some good job, but there are a lot of things that happened. But Ghana, they were mature enough to let it go and let us move on. I think that was the end part of it, and that was good. It helped Ghana. How did you come into uh, politics? Because usually people who describe themselves as being shy when they were young um, normally don't end up in politics. And usually when they come into politics, they are such nice guys that they don't make good politicians. How did you come into politics? Uh, as I said, uh, I was disappointed that Yaya uh, uh, decided to contest election as a civilian. And this party of UDP came up. It was a very strong party at the time. Mm -hmm. I believe that they can win elections. I supported the cause because they were strong, but it didn't happen. But I continue with that support, believing that we can bring about change. Uh, because I was a street supporter, everybody recognized me. Even if they are raising funds, they come to my office, I contribute. From 2007, election, National Assembly elections, Everybody wanted me to contest, in you know, so my consequence. And they know that I was a supporter of UDP, who said that will call me. It's a national call, we want you to contest elections. This is the way I contested elections. And later, they called me to the executive. I was part of the executive. As I was contributing there. I was again nominated to be the, uh, how to call it, to be the, the coordinator for my region, because you are the... I was doing that coordinating, and later, Ahmad Sani was jailed. He was our treasurer. He had an emergency meeting. At that meeting, Hussein Jajo suggested again, he want me to be the treasurer. So I took up that responsibility as treasurer. 2016, our convention, that is the... the Convention of the UDP, I was again selected as the chairman organizing committee. We had a very good congress. This is how I came about mm -hmm. through this level.
When you contested elections for the first time, what happened? Did you win? Did no, you lose? I lost. If you lost, why, why did you I, think you lost? I lost. I lost because I was not experienced. One. And I lost because there was an advantage of the incumbent. Uh, these, are, these were the factors. And um, also, uh, I think the timing also, because I was just eight months in the country, not experienced in politics, mm -hmm. and I was called upon. I was not really prepared. But when you lost, you accepted your loss in good faith. You didn't contest um, your defeat in any court. When I lost the IEC, uh, how to call it, the IEC man who was responsible, was surprised. I rise up, call upon my opponent, shake his hand, congratulate him. After finishing that congratulation, I gave him a message. We accept you as our National Assembly member. I want you to accept us as your opposition. Whatever you are doing things right, you want our help, we'll help you. If we criticize you, accept it. This is national duty. They were very happy. They gave me the police to escort me to my house because of what I did that day. Everybody was happy. Mm. And what was your relationship like with that person since? We were childhood friends. We went to the same school together. We were brought up together. And we knew each other. But because of incumbency, mm -hmm. there were a lot of things happening. But you always accept the will of the people. Would it be fair to say then that you were disappointed that after you were declared the winner, first the president congratulated you and then came back a week later to retract um, that congratulatory uh, message he put on television? I was seriously disappointed. I didn't expect that he will go that far. Uh, we thought that he will give a message, not a friendly message, but we didn't expect that the president will say uh, annual elections. Because we believe that he doesn't have that authority. So we are seriously disappointed, but we handled the situation with maturity. Let's go back to that morning of uh, December the 2nd, um, when you probably knew already that you had won, and you were probably waiting for this call. I mean, what was it like? Did, did you expect him to call that day? Did you expect any call at all, any concession call? Before even the 1st of December, I was telling people that if Yaja may lose, he will accept. Because it's the people. What made you confident he this, would accept? This support. People were united. People were ready for this change. So that support was there. So I believe me, he will respect that. Uh, that early morning, because we all knew that what were the results by 3 o'clock, we were anxiously waiting for a call. There are a lot of protocols that we are going on. We are patiently waiting. We got a contact through Balagaba Jahumba that the president will call me. The time he was supposed to call me failed, but we are still waiting. That's why I was supposed to give a statement on that day, but it delays me to give that statement because we were waiting until finally we received that call that gave us a lot of credit on that day and it was history it was that was positive history and then of course negative history uh, was to follow how did he get your number to my surprise it was difficult for them to get my number <laughs> They have to struggle until they get Uncle Oje Jallo to get my number and, and call me. Yes. So he got your number and called you. Do you have his number? I don't have his number. I didn't find out. I didn't look for it either. But I know if I have lost, I will make all efforts to get his number and call him and congratulate him. Mm -hmm. yeah. and was that the only time he spoke to you? Uh, since he congratulated you, has there, any been, has there been any contact between the two of you? No contact. That's the only time we spoke on telephone. No contact at all. So how is the transition 
going on. Um, in Ghana, we know already that um, you know the incoming president has a team that is already working with the outgoing president uh, to ensure a smooth transition. We are all looking forward to the 19th of January. What's happening now? We already set up our team, but because of that announcement on GRTS, it, uh, we are, it's still we are on a standstill. Uh, but inshallah, a few days to come, the door will open. We have our team. We want government to set up their team so that we move on. Because time is not on our side. I'll make this my last question. Um, everybody is anxious to know who is going to be in your cabinet. And maybe two or three very important positions, um, people were speculating, at least you would have announced by now. Foreign Minister, because we understand diplomats are coming to you. By now they should have known a person in your team they'll start working with. Finance Minister, um, obviously, and possibly um, a vice president, because in our case it's unique. Gambians did not vote for a particular party candidate. They voted for an independent candidate representing a group of parties. When can we start hearing one by one, say, indicate, you know, like Donald Trump is naming one by one, when will we start hearing the cabinet of uh, President-elect Adam Abaro? Very soon. We have gone very far with it. But we are taking our time, calculating our steps, doing a lot of consultation, and we want a very good composition. That's why it is uh, dragging a little bit. But inshallah, uh, very, very soon, we'll have a cabinet. Thank you very much for talking to us. Just on a final note, commiserations, while you are in the second division, the Elder Banyula still in the first division, <laughs> Arsenal is below Liverpool. <laughs> so it's not, it's, it's not a very good year all round for you. Where do you think Arsenal will finish in the Premier League? I believe Arsenal is very strong this year. It's just that these last two matches, we didn't do well, but we will pick up. Inshallah, we will we'll be in the first uh, force, force four, for sure, always, as always it is be. Yes. The President-elect, thank you very much for this interview.